I know you didn't walk into a Bernina store, buy a Bernina just to do mending, but there are some built-in mending stitches and they are so simple to use. And I promise never to tell anybody that your machine will mend. So just between you and me, I'm gonna show you how to do a quick mending project just in case you have some to do and definitely don't tell anybody you can do mending for them. You're going to regret it. So just don't offer that service especially if that is not something that you want to do for other people. So in your utility menu, go ahead and scroll all the way down to stitch number 22. 22 and 23 are both mending stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how these are done and what the goal is with these stitches. So number one, you will be doing it with your number one C foot. So that is what you should have on. I don't have to do it with the one D foot, but if you did put that on, make sure you check that is the foot you're using. So as we are taking a look at our screen, we have a new function that pops up that says record one, two, three. So as I start to stitch uh, uh, near where my rip might be, I will be stitching down a length. Once I've determined how long I need to stitch, I'm gonna be touching the reverse button on the front of my machine down here, and then it will trigger that many stitches um, each time it sews a row. So that it's gonna, so if I did 10 stitches forward, it's gonna then do 10 stitches back, 10 stitches forward, 10 back, until it gets all the way from the left needle position across all the way to the far right needle position. So super fun and easy to do. Again, don't tell anybody it's this easy, but you do need to, um, let's just say we have a, a rip on our fabric and I'm gonna just go ahead and draw it in for today. So let's just say this is the opening. Um, I'm gonna be starting up in this top corner, kind of a little above it. And as I work my way across it, it will totally cover it up. Definitely when you use matching thread, super easy, it's gonna just disappear. The last thing you need to do is have something behind it. So either some iron-on interfacing, another piece of fabric, some stabilizer, something to stitch over this. So if you're just doing it on the single layer, it's not gonna work. You gotta have something over the top of it. Now, if it is a straight rip like this, tell you the truth, you're gonna wanna stitch it this way, and those stitches will contain that from opening up any further. So let me show you how this works. So like I said, you wanna start a little bit above where the rip has taken place, and then just step on the foot control until it starts to sew. You're gonna notice that it's gonna easily just come down and start to stitch forward. So, and if you kinda of watch the screen, and that's where that little reverse button comes up to indicate that this will be the button I'm gonna be touching once I've traveled past the opening area. So there I have it. I'm gonna to touch the reverse button one time. That's the only thing you have to do. So then it's just gonna go back and forth. One, pretty much a row at each needle position. And then that way it's going to really contain any of the, the areas that might be kind of um, kind of sticking up where your rip was and just keep your foot on the foot control until it comes to a complete stop. So that's why you want the stitch, uh, the, the foot with the nine millimeter stitch width because then that way it really goes a nice distance. Now, if it's not this wide, you can definitely stop sooner. If it's wider than the foot width, okay, because it's gonna stop right about there, you're gonna find that you could easily repeat this by actually just lifting up your presser foot, overlapping a few stitches, and continuing over to where that hole might continue to be. So that's how easy it is. Yes, you will usually see a little angle, but look how pretty those stitches are. I know even in red on white fabric, but it will definitely be so pretty when you see it with matching three red. So super easy. Uh, you could go ahead and stitch this again because on your screen it shows auto. So the length of this particular stitch that we created is 27 millimeters long and it's ready to do it again. So if I just stepped on the foot control in a new area, it would continue that same length I just created. So let's talk about stitch number 23. It's been a while since I've done it, so I'm gonna just go ahead and do it on the fly. But there are some stitches that kind of go underneath. So if you had a, a rip that had a lot of like areas that were really kind of um, fluffy and you kind of needed them to stitch down, choose number 23 
three. Let's just see if it kind of works the same way. It should. It's going to start with some stitches that are kind of back and forth. You can see it kind of going like a serpentine stitch. And then there's that reverse button again. So let's just go ahead and touch it. Once I stop and touch it. Ah, uh, yes, that didn't actually work because you do need to come in and use your buttonhole foot 3A for this particular stitch. And then when you touch the reverse button, the buttonhole foot will travel back and forth and create the mending stitch. So to start this again, I'm going to touch the pattern begin. So I can start again. I'm going to push clear so it clears out that length. And now with the buttonhole foot on, let's go ahead and stitch. We'll touch the reverse button. And so now the machine actually knows that that is the length we need it to be. And then it will start its back and forth. So a gr still a great way to have the underlay stitches kind of fill in over maybe a rough patch. And so it really helps hold down any of the frayed out fabric that you're trying to mend. Just keep your foot on the foot control or use the start stop button and that will continue the pattern until it is ready to stop. So you can kind of see the difference. You can see that the underlay stitches are underneath this one where this one was just more of a straight up and down. So just know you have mending stitches. You do have some bar tacks also here. So make sure you check those out and see that those can help kind of secure things back in place should the mending need to be extended to extra areas.